Hi, my name is Franz von Holthausen. I head up design for Tesla. I've been doing this for about 15 years now. I got into designing cars actually through my dad. My dad's a designer. I heard about this great school in Los Angeles called Art Center and started my career with Volkswagen and Audi. And then I've been through various companies through the years and until I got the phone call from Elon one day. I was working at Mazda at the time and had been there for about three and a half years. You know, we were doing really exciting stuff, and but I also felt like Mazda wasn't really focused on sustainability. And I had been reading about this little car company that was using batteries and putting them in, in cars. And I think I read it in Popular Science or something, an article, and I was really intrigued. And then through a friend got connected to, to Elon and we had a really great conversation. I went up to meet him at SpaceX and was just really impressed with what he was pulling together at that time. This was mid 2008. And so both Tesla and SpaceX were in their infancy and just really getting started. But I, I just felt like here's a company and a guy incredibly focused on sustainability, trying to do something that no other car company was doing and be 100% electric. And yeah, we connected and I don't know, the rest is kind of the history that's around us. What is it like to have Elon Musk as a boss? <laughs> Elon's a great boss. I mean, he's always pushing the boundaries, always pushing the limits, and always keeps us trying to be as radical as possible, never accepting the status quo, always trying to take one extra step to make sure something is perfect. He, he cares a ton about what the customer perception is. How does a customer relate to the product? What, what's the experience they're gonna have? And he, he, he cares deeply about that. And so we are constantly worried about that as well and constantly focused on that. So. I mean, he's just, like I said, he's just always pushing us and get exact and getting the, um, the best out of everybody on the team. Are there any moments when the two of you disagreed on a design element? Any stories that come to mind? Yeah, I mean, we, we've agreed to disagree, and, um, but ultimately he's the boss, so. <laughs> Talk about the Cybertruck design. How did this design come to be? <laughs> The Cybertruck is a, one of these rare moments where, in a way, form followed function. A lot of times we put the form in front of the function, especially in auto, the automotive world, and it's really tough to mix the two. But Cybertruck is really born out of the idea of a different way of manufacturing a material that put the, the toughness on the outside. So we really wanted to use stainless steel as a material so that the hardest part of the vehicle was on the outside, not the delicate paint. And it, it felt right for a truck that's a, you know, used in like a Swiss Army knife in, in any kind of environment, uh, has to be tough. So stainless steel is really tough to form, especially when you make it bulletproof or thicker to withstand impacts and not be damaged. And so we really looked at new ways of manufacturing it. You could only break form and form it in one direction. You can't do compound curves or um, things with the thickness of the stainless steel that we're using. So it really led us to a design that was really planar, really simplistic, and it was also a chance to break the paradigm of what pickup trucks have been for the past 60 or 70 years. They're the same, they're kind of <laughs> this three box shape. And we just thought from an aerodynamic perspective, having a covered back, um, a sloping roof would also be helpful and oddly enough it may not look it but the Cybertruck is an incredibly aerodynamic vehicle. I'm curious if you have a favorite design, favorite feature, something that you're most proud of. Favorite one is the one that's coming. Um, <laughs> I think that it can talk about. Um, I'm really excited about Cybertruck. I think you know this vehicle has the chance to be something really radical in a pretty normal space. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that shake up and seeing them out on the street. And it's incredibly functional. It's not just the way it looks. It's as functional as any of its competitors, if not more. And so I think people use it in ways that we can't even expect. And it'll be great to see how that, how that trait plays out. Oh.
Oh my fucking god. The window smashing was definitely not a thing that we expected to happen. I had been in the back prior to getting on stage, you know, throwing this ball at the window multiple times. It didn't break and we have, you know, we showed video proof of that. But that moment was a little bit of a heart drop. But at the end of the day, it actually ended up being something really special. And, you know, I think after the fact, when I was talking with the people in the audience, they're like, that was supposed to happen, right? And, well, at least the ball didn't go through the window and kill anybody or anything. So it became a meme very quickly. And I think it really helped Cybertruck take on a whole cultish being of its own, I guess. How different will the production Cybertruck be from this vehicle behind you? And also what's taking so long to get it off the production line? There's a lot of new things in Cybertruck. When we're reinventing a product, sometimes we have to go through these processes just to, to prove it out. Um, we had this idea that using, making an exoskeleton vehicle could work, and so we've been using that time to make sure that that actually is working. And the Cybertruck will look for all intents and purposes, just like the one behind us. It's maybe slightly smaller, a few percentages, but in general, this is what the truck will look like. There was a moment, you know, where I thought when I first joined Tesla that it would be great to see multiple Teslas in one drive experience around town. And, and, and now, you know, you, it's hard to go anywhere without seeing a bunch of Teslas. So it's great to see the impact that Tesla's had in people's lives, but also how it's changed the industry and really pushed this idea that an EV can be better than an uh, internal combustion vehicle. And Cybertruck will continue that, that story. Some people hate the Cybertruck design, the other people love it. How does that make you feel? Was that sort of the idea behind it? It wasn't the idea behind it. I think it was just about making um, again, the, the, the form follows the function and creating something that's different and taking a chance and being bold, but still being safe and functional and hitting all the attributes for what a pickup truck should be. And there's no reason why you can't change the recipe. There are a lot of unique features on Teslas, like the door handles, for example. Why does Tesla decide to push the boundaries on small features like that? Some of these small features, like the door handles, are just really great uh, first touch points. But the handle is the thing that greets you when you approach the car. And so to have the handle come out magically as you approach it and give you your first kind of handshake uh, really gave a, a slight anthropomorphic feel to the car, just humanized it a little bit, uh, allowed you to not just be stepping into a really cold machine. It, it, it was a, a warming gesture. And it's also very aerodynamic to not have door handles hanging out in the wind on the side of the car. So we combine those kind of things. Tesla isn't beholden to what's been done in the past, and we're always trying to push the boundaries and, and deliver on a promise of something fun, um, something enjoyable and something that you would love to own and tell your friends about. I was curious about the semi. Was that the first time you've worked on a semi truck before? Actually it was and you know we got really involved in what it means to be a driver, a user, um, how the routes work, how trucks are used and but not knowing that didn't stop us. In in fact, it was quite liberating to approach it from a really clean sheet. And by having a completely different package than what exists currently, we, we are allowed to come up with a completely different end result and one that's way better for the driver, the, the user of the product. Um, there's much more interior cabin space. There's a much better view. We put our safety systems into it, including autopilot. There's no fumes, there's no vibrations, just a better overall working space for the driver. Where do you get your inspiration? My inspiration comes from anywhere. I mean, like looking out the, the window of a plane or I used to be a cyclist and just getting out on the road and clearing my head kind of allows for uh, ideas to come, like running around with my kids. Um, it, it, inspiration really comes from anywhere and I can't really pinpoint it or, or expect to be able to be inspired at a specific time or moment. It just have to be aware and open-eyed and open-eared and absorb. Was there a car when you were a little boy that you loved, something that, you know, inspired you, a favorite car? 
I think my favorite car, my all-time favorite car, is a 62 250 GTO. I mean, it's quintessential. It's an insane car. But I'm also a big fan of this kind of wedge era. Um, so the early Countaches and that whole, that whole kind of flat, um, low sports cars. Where I was always a, those were always posters on my wall. I'm driving a Model S Plaid right now, and it's uh, it's an incredible car. It's arguably the best car we've built. Is the fastest car on the road at any moment. You know you're faster than anybody else, but it's safe. You can put my family fits in it. I can put bicycles in it. It's yeah, it's a great all-round car. It's still you know from the inception of the design that we started in 2008. It still looks modern and fresh on the road today. I'm curious how different it is to design for EVs compared to a gas-powered car. Designing an EV is, um, and especially the way that we architect our vehicles with a battery pack on the floor and the drive units between the wheels, it really allows basically everything above that kind of skateboard or platform to be the, the people space, the space that we design for the people. So there's no longer a big clunky massive metal in front of you or a transmission tunnel and emission, you know, exhaust pipes, et cetera, running down the middle of the car, that's open space. So we have a lot of opportunity to give back to the customer, give back to the to the owner of the, the car space. So, you know, there's a front trunk, there's a Model S that like we, we put seven people in the car because we didn't have all these things that are traditionally found in an internal combustion engine layout vehicle. Semi's a pretty radical approach to uh, an industry that hasn't seen change in the architecture of the vehicle since the inception. And so by removing the motor and the transmission in front of the vehicle, we could put the driver in the middle for the best command view. We could move him really far forward and create a really teardrop shape around the driver that goes back to the cab for an incredibly aero-efficient package. So there's a lot of liberties that come with it. At the same time, cars right now have four wheels and they need to hold people and they need to be safe and so there's a lot of challenges that we have to overcome to stylistically make the cars look pretty and not feel like they're over-regulated and that's one of the challenges that we're always facing. Designing a car can happen in your mind pretty quickly. Cybertruck was actually you know a quick sketch and the idea was there. Model S, Model 3, these cars were a lot longer to really evolve and try to really extract a, an athletic poise out of a vehicle, something that felt like it was efficient. We use the word efficient a lot, and so we're trying to design around this idea of efficiency. The inspiration can come from anywhere. You can formulate that into an idea quickly, or you can, it can take a while to really, getting from the idea to the production car, we're working on trying to do that in two years. I think the future of transportation is going to change pretty radically. I feel like we're on the precipice of that with the uh, advent of autonomy, with autonomous vehicles becoming the norm, and no longer do you have to drive yourself to a destination or be the driver of the vehicle, the, the, the vehicle that's driving you. I think it changes our, the, the way that we use the vehicles, the way that we transport ourselves around. We're pretty used to it already in planes and air travel and trains and buses to some degree, but I think the next step is really the, the automobile. And I think that autonomy is going to really radically change the form of the car, how it's used, the interior space, potentially the ownership experience as well. I've worked at a, a bunch of different manufacturers around the, the globe, and I think Tesla's just unique in its all-in approach to sustainability. Um, there is no kind of parachute, there's no backup plan. We sink or swim on the products that we produce. Elon is incredibly driven. We're driven behind that. Um, we're all believing the mission. And I think when you see the impact that we've been able to have in a few short years into a, an industry that has not changed in many, many years. It's rewarding in a way and it, it's, it, it's motivating and it keeps us going because there's much more that we want to do and there's, you know, we need to, we need to change faster in order to help save our planet. How do you feel about having your work in a museum? 
I mean, it's not all my work. I represent a little bit of the, the piece of the puzzle here. This is a, an amazing focus on the Tesla team. It's nice to see, you know, the, there's artwork and the representation of people from our studio, the engineering work, uh, manufacturing, all of it coming together in one place. So I've been involved in quite a few of the projects here and it's, it's, it's great to see it all come together in one piece. And it's also a nice walk down memory lane. You know, when you're so focused on what's the next thing, sometimes you forget to look back at what you've accomplished along the way. And this is a really great showcase of the accomplishments that Tesla has done in the past 15 years. What advice do you have to young designers, in particular auto designers? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's um, when I was a kid, I, like when I learned that you could be a, a car designer, it felt like being an astronaut. You know, you hear these ideas of like chase your dreams and go after it, but in that instance, you really have to. There's opportunities for you to get involved and learn the craft and go to some, uh, there's a few amazing schools that can really teach you and put you in a position to get involved in some of these manufacturers and places like this. And if you have any aspiration to do that, do it because it's incredibly rewarding and it's, a, it's incredibly fun. The reward is seeing how people spend their hard-earned money on something that you've created and get joy and satisfaction out of it. That's the best feeling.